Today we had a chance to talk with one and only Mr. Jason Greystone, one of the biggest Forex experts that I personally know. So stay tuned and check out the questions that I've been asking him. Hello everybody and welcome back to the channel. Uh, today's, in today's hot seat, we have one and only my mentor and one, my coach, well, one of the mentors, Mr. Jason Greystone. I'm sure that everybody here or most of you that are watching this or listening to this interview already heard about this name because he's well, well known in the Forex industry. So Jason, thank you for coming here. It's seriously my honor having you live. It's, it's been a hard, you gave me a hard time getting you here. <laughs> it's a are. pleasure. <laughs> yeah, thank you I, for I, coming, I, man. I wanted to be one of the later ones on the show purely because most people, there's a lot of people that start up these things and never really continue past two episodes, three episodes. So uh, it ended up just t taking up a lot of time when it was really not beneficial for anyone. Yeah, I understand that. Yeah. Oh, mo mo same like in Forex. I mean, most of the people eventually kind of quit. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. It's, it's a universal law like there is there is this 90 10 rule to everything mm -hmm. so I, I'm, I'm very much of the philosophy that uh, at any point in your life wherever you are in your point at any point in your life 90 percent of the people in that exact situation won't carry on or won't push on or that literally 90 percent of people will give up if you're trying to do something they will give up and it's the same in you know, uh, finances, you look at the world's wealth, it's all controlled by 10%, you know, 90% mm -hmm. of the world's wealth is managed and run by 10% of the world's population. Um, you know, trading, 10% of traders fail. It's just everything, businesses, 10% of businesses succeed. And it's just, it's just a universal law for everything. Yeah, I can agree on that. And even though uh, it's, Every time I, uh, when I stumble upon a, uh, you know, you used to say a wall. I always remember, well, you know, I'm not going to beat that 90%, man. I just got to push through, through this it. bullshit and just carry on. I mean, it's <laughs> some kind of a progress, you know. Eventually, it will show up as a big result, but uh, maybe at a time of when we are hitting that wall, maybe we just don't, don't see it. Uh, yeah. Don't see the progress. That, that's what I meant. No, you don't. You don't always see the progress, which is why it's good. it's a, it's a very good idea to to get perspective every now and then and sort of exercise gratitude for what you have achieved, um, mm -hmm. and and actually make that a real thing. Make that a, an exercise that you carry out. Otherwise, you just you're on this hamster wheel. You've got this big to do yep. list, and you never really feel like you're getting anywhere. Yeah, absolutely. But you know, he, here we are ranting typically for both of us, but <laughs> let's, 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 uh, let's try. I see you're already watching your trades. So obviously this is a Forex interview. I'm entering the, one of the best Forex traders that I know. So Jason, can you tell us a little bit more about yourself? How did you start trading Forex? Why did you, why did you even get in, in the Forex bit? Because I know that you had a, a very decent job or business, actually your own business, or you were running a business for somebody else. Uh, why make a sudden, you know, drastic move and go into gambling? <laughs> ah, very good. Good question. Um, really, it all became part of a strategy. Um, I was very young when I started my first business. I became very stressed for very long, and that sort of became the norm. Um, and I was in an industry that was turning south. It wasn't really... Um, there was a big conflict in the industry, which I'm sure you're aware of. Actually, you're 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 in a you're in a very similar industry um, where technology was moving quickly, contractors were moving slowly. There was a big conflict, and there was a lot of frustration. And I got I, I knew that I didn't want to do it forever, so mm -hmm. I thought I thought um, I need to start looking at getting out of this thing. So I, I basically dedicated my focus and attention in my life to how can I replace an income? Uh, so I became from 23, 24, I became obsessed with uh, investing and very, very low passive investments. And um, mm -hmm, I was mm -hmm. saving, I was optimizing all my expenses and things like that. And I was really trying to, um, 
you know, make the most of the money I was earning and the business, I just thought, well, I can use this business to fuel um, mm-hmm. my strategy to replace my income. So I basically ramped the business up, tried to pay myself as much as I possibly could to dump into savings and investments. And I knew that I had about a 10 year, uh, 10 to 15 year um, period that where it would actually replace my income. So I started working on that and I got so peed off um, in my late twenties. I thought I've really got to ramp this up. I've really got to ramp this up now. So I started looking at ways to take some of my returns and my, my income and, you know, speculate it and get, get higher returns. How old but, are you at, at a time when you're looking to speculate? Uh, I, was, I was 28, 27, 28. Okay, I love the answer because I started at 27 with Forex. And took, I'm sorry for interrupting, basically, in, no, in the fine. middle of your question. Uh, and then I I ran it. I started, you know, experimenting. I actually found a kill online uh, over at a older company. I think I saw your videos as well with the mixture of Akil and you. But I thought, what what do the, these guys know? I mean, they're making like 30% returns per year. I'm going to make 10 per month, man. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> even more. Uh, uh, so it took if me. You make, if you make ten percent per month, let me know. <laughs> yeah, okay, <laughs> we'll do. It. it took me two years of, of struggling. So I'm glad I, I see you. You're being successful, uh, hugely successful right now. So as I said to you, somehow you're a role model for me because we started around the same age, at least doing this spe- specula- speculative things with forex market. Yeah, and uh, I see where you are right now and I know where I want to go and it's very much similar to what you are doing right now. Yeah, uh, I, with, I, with trading. I, it's absolutely possible. I mean, I, I didn't just look at trading Forex. I looked at um, poker. I looked at options and I looked at Forex and um, I, I went to one of those seminars. It seemed easy and I thought this this is a bit of me. And then uh, I, I realized it was really hard and I ended up blowing a lot of money. Um, yeah. I blew, you know, close to 40 grand within the first year. And um, oh, shit. yeah, and it was painful. It wasn't, you know, I was a businessman and I was sensible, very sensible with money. And I, it wasn't money I couldn't afford to lose. It wouldn't cripple me, but it was mm-hmm. still a lot more than I was willing to spend on education and, and you know, and, and donations uh, to, to the market. So um, I, I really just made a vow really to to i had to knuckle down i had to stop what i was doing because that wasn't working and and really get mentored and and really get you know understand what i was doing and make sure i had a plan to 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 get on the right track and once i done that i did very well i became you know I, i did very well actually the first year of my trading was a little bit more volatile than it is now but i it was probably one of my best <laughs> returns for that first year and um seriously yeah, yeah, but I wouldn't trade like that. I wouldn't. I just wouldn't trade like that. I wasn't happy with the drawdown and and all the rest of it. But, um, but I did very well and uh, I was happy. And and you know, I know a lot of people say, oh, you know, you you educate and you earn money from education. I was, you know, I moved into this house and everything be- way before I was teaching. It was I was a happy trader. You know, I was I removed myself from relying so on income. You became profitable at. How old are you? Uh, I really became profitable at 30. It was on the turn of 31, 32 years old. Um, that's when I stopped. Uh, that's when I started uh, generating pro- consistent profits. And when I was 30, yeah, 32 to 33. Was so when that was I- your first, like, first great year. Yeah, 32 was my great year. 32 for 33, that was my, you know, I was I was off on one after that. Because of you, I started uh, preaching backtesting, but not like software backtesting, but uh, manual backtesting and all of that stuff. Uh, well, how many trades did you backtest before, roughly, in hundreds, in hundreds, before you started trading live? Yeah, I didn't know what backtesting was. That, that was one of the biggest problems for me that was one of the reasons that I struggled for so long um and when I started back testing and taking it seriously that was all I was doing I remember it taking up consuming my you know consuming my life uh and I think I worked out I did around 650 hours 
uh, of, of testing in, in one, you know, in one stint, basically, that took me a few, quite a few months. And, um, and yeah, so 650 hours, it was over, initially it was over 11 pairs uh, with three different strategies. So it took, you know, it took a long time. <laughs> so that was your first, that was your first kind of first strategy, 11 pairs or something. No, actually you, you cut some of the pairs off and then you started with one of the pairs exactly. that performed the best. Yeah. Yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah. Okay. And it was around, it was around 11 markets that I went through from start to finish. Okay. I'm at six now with three strategies per, per, per pair. Right. So you know the yeah. pain. Yeah. It's a long, long, and actually the biggest pain is. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but at least for me is finding, you know, going through those loser pairs. You gotta, <laughs> you gotta go through it like six years of data just to find out it's not gonna, you're not gonna trade it at all. The and way I hurt. like, the way I like to look at that, Ivan, is um, is how much money it saved you. So yeah, you're actually I, I, earning money. You're actually earning money from not trading that. Yeah, okay. I can agree on that. However, it is still, I'm still young at all of this, you know, I'm just a newbie. I'm not a professional trader. I'm not profitable yet. I need to make my first yearly return to be, to find myself consistently, pro to think of myself that I'm consistently profitable trader. Yep. Yeah, but the thing is that uh, so I see other people trading it successfully. And what's blowing my mind is how can you trade something that's just not profitable for me and then you know and i know that it's just not then i start thinking i know that a lot of things are on my mind right now so i <laughs> it's hard to pronounce it but uh how then i start uh how do you say this then i start doubting myself did i mark it good do do i see it correctly sometimes i double check everything just to find out yeah and then you uh, in the first few years you, the same markings was were successful for you Right now, in the next two years, they're just like very, very bad, and overall, they are bad performing. Yeah, that's that's why we must keep a, a journal, keep tabs on our our trades, journal our trades, log our trades. That's effectively our our P and L. We need to see where we're bleeding profits. And the great thing about doing that is when you've got back testing to compare it to, you can actually go, is this normal? You've got a reference point to say, is this normal? And if you don't do that, you don't. Um, one thing as traders, we never we never know if our system's going to stop working. We we never actually know that. Uh, and every drawdown yeah. that we enter, that doubt always does creep in. Well, it does with me anyway. You know, we go for a drawdown. I've been I'm in one now. I've been in one this year. So, you know, there's how a big of, of a me. drawdown are you? Sorry. Yeah, I'm, I'm in. A, uh, sorry. In how big of a drawdown are you right now? Oh, I'm only down like a few percent. Uh, from the year but that's the year start so it's basically been 45 days or whatever it is of, mm -hmm. of, of basically break even now um and there is a part of me all the time that thinks you know is this it is this the end you know? <laughs> uh, but because i've journaled my trades because i've journaled my trades and i've got all that back testing data and i've i've logged every trade that i've taken um, that's also back-tested data, I can now compare it and go, this is nowhere near my maximum drawdown, so this is just normal. I just need to carry on. If you don't have that data and you're not journaling your trades and you're not treating it as a business, you've got no hope. You know, you just won't have... Yeah. You just don't know what you're doing. You don't know what to expect. Yeah, then if you don't have all of this data, then you're actually gambling. Uh, you are. I actually, yeah, yeah, I actually recorded a video today I saw you taking the Euro USD cipher, and I, I'm just about to finish my back, te back testing on it. And before, I would just kind of follow it and take the take the cipher, you know. But now I know that the ciphers, for example, in Euro dollar, after 1 p.m. my time, just are not profitable for me. There you and, go. Uh, yeah, and then and I, I can see somebody else taking it, but I'm not gonna take it. And uh, in a few of my videos that I recorded. I show how I avoided the trade and it turned out to be a loser. But uh, Jason, so kind of that brings us to what was your biggest aha moment so far in trading? Uh, my biggest aha moment was when I came out of my first drawdown because that was when um, 
I still didn't trust everything up until that point. So I spent about 18 months blowing money and then I spent, I learned a lot in those 18 months and then I spent the next 18 months really honing in and, and treating it seriously, doing all the testing, um, optimizing my system and, and, and then ready to go live. I funded my account with a fairly significant lump of money um, mm -hmm. and I went live and, and four four and a half or just under five weeks later I had less money in my account uh, than I started with I, I literally went straight into a drawdown how big was it big psychologically a few percent or like 10 10 percent no it was between six and seven percent something like that well that, um, that's if on a lump sum of money that, that's something it, it was yeah yeah it was big it was big um but it weren't past it you know it weren't 10 um mm -hmm. so it's between six and seven percent for just under five weeks i had less money than i started and you know i thought this you know this doesn't work and it was only because i was around the right people at that time that they said just stick with it stick with it stick with it i did and then the fifth week or into the yeah into the fifth week i um i i you know went into new equity highs in my account into profit and uh into the green and and it was that moment where i thought ah you know, this is <laughs> this is what you have to do. This is where you. This is how the money's made here. Um, and then I, Keep, you know, and then stay I with the plan. Stick with the plan. Was, yeah. So how? how uh, what did I want to ask? So seven percent drawdown, like in four months. Uh, what was your return that year? How? What? What is the average return that professional forex trader, like in general, can expect from the from the markets? What do you read? I, well, I know how much. But tell for the people that are watching this. Yeah, so I mean, a a, a good trader uh, can do uh, anything from one to two percent per month. Uh, a, a fantastic trader can do two to three percent per mm -hmm, month, mm -hmm, and, and mm -hmm. really, the sort of top end traders are doing three four percent per month, and and anything beyond that is is really, um, you know, not realistic for people that are, that are getting into it um you should be happy with three percent four percent per month because that compounds out to you know 36 40 percent per year um and then yeah. obviously you apply a, a decent money management strategy to that and you're you're cooking on bigger. gas you're yeah. cooking on gas the and uh, the, my yeah, best please, you know my, my best return <laughs> was 68 yeah. percent uh you know that wasn't uh, and again, we're talking averages over time here. So, um, sixty-eight percent. I was trading a lot more volatile. It was it was a lot more volatile. My my drawdown was too big, um, and I wouldn't be comfortable trading like that now. But yeah, I, I, why why not now? Because of the size I, of the account. Because of my size, of my, yeah, I wouldn't be comfortable with the amount of money that that would that would be in a drawdown now. <laughs> so size matters, huh? <laughs> size, size matters, but that's not what I tell my wife. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Uh, so the, the thing that I think is important to, to tell here, obviously this is not like every month hitting those two, three, four percent. It just like Jason said, it averages out because he himself was in a drawdown of 7% the first month. Then he went uh, out of the uh, drawdown in green after uh, five week uh, in in your five week of training fifth week of training, yeah. yeah so on average he was that th those two months he averaged zero percent return. That that's basically the point. Yeah. 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 So Jason, I know, but tell us. So now you're a successful trader. You're obviously trading for a living. Uh, is the money that you're tr trading for a living would that be enough? uh for like uh, you know a lot of people have dreams of buying the lamborghinis and all of that stuff would that can that be do is that doable with the forex um absolutely i mean the the first of all i wouldn't ever advise buying a lamborghini that's uh that's mm -hmm. a terrible waste investment. of money <laughs> terrible yeah. investment if you're gonna if you're gonna drive a lamborghini you want to get it on like higher purchase or finance of some sort on a on a sort of um, balloon deal where you pay 3.9% on 50% of the car rather than, you know, sacrifice all that liquidity into a car and you that's not in your trading account getting you 10, 20% per year. That's just, you yeah. know, it's crazy. Um, 
so for me it's all about lifestyle and lifestyle is is through income so i want to have as much money as i can in my investment and trading account so that i can have an income um, that provides me with a lifestyle now i don't live i know i live in 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 quite a big house and everything and and all that and I, i've got a fairly decent car we travel a lot and you know we we have a very nice comfortable life but i would say that i live kind of simplistic my my living expenses aren't as expensive as uh, you might think so really all i'm looking to do is cover that that income and i was doing that very very comfortably for about 18 months and then obviously we went into education that's another income stream you know that's uh, it all sits with my strategy of of um of increasing your income you know multiple mm-hmm. income streams and all the rest of it so i'm not like i don't hide the fact that, that education doesn't pr- provide an income but it's very very small compared to my trading returns you know i couldn't for instance i couldn't live on my education income uh i can live very comfortably from my trading income but the decent thing is about other income streams is as you generate other income streams you can save your trading capital and let that compound as you guys probably know or if you didn't know you know jason grayston is one of the co-founders of 2-1 trading company the company that elevated and changed the direction of my trading as well uh, so this is a good moment, Jason. Can you tell us a little bit more about, about the company? I'm, I'm one of, I think I'm, I'm one of the biggest promoters. Everybody who asks me about anything, I always say, just go to tier one trading. It's just one buck trial. And the biggest thing here, I think, is that uh, a lot of people out there are promoting like a bunch of one buck trial offers, and there is some kind of a stigma in people thinking that you will automatically rebuild people. And yeah. the best thing is you're not rebuilding. You're <laughs> actually being, giving people uh, live rooms, which is something that I, I needed so desperately to see somebody actually producing profit each and every day and how the actual pro trader is acting while he's trading. All of these cameras are just pushing, you know, Rolexes and all of the bunch travels, private jets and all of that bullshit. I mean, it's not bullshit. It's nice, but... It's bullshit. While you never see anybody trading live and saying why is he taking that trade, it's easy to set, take a trade in hindsight when the move already happened. But uh, yeah. predicting and actually engaging is something else. So you guys offer that and much more for just one buck. Can you tell us a little bit about, about that? Yeah, so there's there's a very... We, obviously, we'd worked with with thousands of traders uh, around the world before, and um, what we didn't want to do, we didn't want to. There was there's a high churn rate, you know, there's a high failure rate, and what we didn't want to do was just create another place where people could go and buy a course, or um, you know, what what we really wanted to do, we we basically just went back to the drawing board and said, well, we don't need to, t- we don't need money, we're happy trading. We don't need to rush anything. Let's just have a little think about what the best value we could possibly provide. And we came up with this idea that we would, um, instead of trying to get a lot of people through the door, we would pick high quality clients and try and be responsible for the highest turnover of successful traders in that 10% that succeed. So that 10% that succeed, we wanted to pump out the the highest percentage of traders that make up that 10%. So we said, how do we do that? Um, We had a lot of data. When we essentially took the data and analyzed the data, came up with a very, very predictable pattern and journey that traders go through, very, very predictable uh, six or seven things that they struggle with. And we said, how can we build a platform that basically tapes up and supports all of those weak points so there's literally no way to fail and the only reason that people would fail coming through the program would be because they gave up and that was really the the design principle for the platform so everything down to um you know giving everyone knows us for being transparent realistic expectations um and that's really what it's all about so the 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 dollar trial, for instance, is because we know yeah. that trading isn't for everyone. People are thinking that you can go and buy a Lamborghini tomorrow and you can just start trading from your phone, strolling down the beach with a cocktail. Um, we need to 
we need to get you in low risk, nothing to lose, give you the truth. And then if people think actually this isn't for me, well, then they go and they've spent a dollar. Wow. Uh, or they go, yeah. this is insane. I can actually do this. I'm just going to little juggle my business finances around a bit and I'm going to afford this membership. Uh, rather than selling a high ticket item, they can come in, be with us for as long as they want to be with us. Very, very flexible. And, um, and we give them absolutely everything they need, you know, including all those, those uh, supports in those weak points um, until they become successful. And that's it. Yeah. It's absolutely our choice. What I, exactly. What I when I found relief was when I found out there is no secret, there is no, nothing special. You just got to put in the work. That's it. You yeah. just got to sit down, put in the work, put in the time it's not going to happen tomorrow it's not going to happen overnight you just you, you change expectations that's the, one of the biggest things you keep saying saying and saying and people i i bet a lot of people don't actually understand what does what does that mean but when you get find peace with it that it will take like two years of work yeah two years of daily work just to be able to return 30 percent of your of money then you cannot find peace. Okay, man. Then you prepare yourself, like just like for college. I know, I knew that I won't be able to finish it up in two years because it takes five years. Yeah. And then when you find peace, yeah, then you're fine. You know, you just step it. You're not. Uh, there is no what, pressure. What, what you did, just do. What, what did you do at college? Electrical engineer. Yeah, same here, right? So when you yeah. go to college and you do so, uh, this is what tri this is what triggers me about people's approach to forex trading and this is why we built the platform the way we do because mm -hmm. if you're an electrical engineer you go to college and you you do all the theory you go there and do like the theory and you do the homework and <laughs> i know what you're stuff. gonna say yeah <laughs> right and then you go and you go into the little test bays where everything's laid out perfectly and you do the practical and you sort of everything's gonna work because it's just it works every single time and then you go out onto the site. You go out in to get the experience on site. That's where you get the electrical shocks. That's where you get the the burn from the soldering iron. And you know, you, that's the place where nothing works. That's where the place where nothing <laughs> works. But you have to know yeah. what to do. You need a plan, right? Yeah. So the reason yeah. <laughs> the reason most forex education doesn't work as well is because it's just one piece of the pie. They sell that. You know, it'll be a course, and there's no yeah. direction in the course. There's no you know, you, you don't get those nuances and, and there's just no, no accountability either. Like you've got no one watching over you. It just doesn't work. Absolutely. I completely agree with you. And uh, I couldn't be, I couldn't, I, I don't know. Uh, basically, if anybody wants to change the way they look at trading, if they want to uh, start a proper journey, uh, let those guys guide you, people. Uh, click on the link below this video. There will be links, something like tier1trading.com slash dashboard or something. There is a one buck trial option. You see everything you get. You get software that helps you uh, to find support and resistance zones. You get a software that helps you find patterns. Uh, this whole software is very much helpful for uh, backtesting because it helps and speeds up uh everything you do and you, uh, basically that's it but jason this brings us to one tricky question and i ask everybody here you kind of answered it a little bit but why teach people when you're making a lot of money why teach people because um here's here's my thing um when i replaced my income okay i yeah. was actually doing something that i enjoyed i like trading and I was being heavily rewarded. I had a lot of, you know, income from trading. Um, but something was missing. Something was missing. Uh, really, what I wanted to do was free up my time. So I didn't rely. I was out of the industry that I hated. I had a lot of time and something was missing. So I, you don't you don't just for me, I don't believe that you just sit there trading and you're fulfilled. So there was some kind of fulfillment missing. So really, I realized that I was freeing up my time to then clear my mind to figure out what I wanted to do and I didn't know if that would be helping other entrepreneurs helping other business owners I didn't know if I wanted to do some kind of consultancy um, and it just organically evolved that I was so peed off with all the scams and 
there's sharks in this industry that it just naturally evolved into me helping a couple of people learn how to read the markets. Then I went into um, into teaching and and you know it's it's been great. I love it. I, I just why not? You know um, now yeah. I've got the the reward. Now I've got the passion. Now I've got the fulfillment, and it's it's just that sweet spot that I needed um, to to you know be that well rounded human being. Uh, I think that trading is a tool. I don't think it's the be all and end all. I think it is a tool to free up your time so that you can then concentrate on other areas of life that you find fulfilling. And um, that's that's what it is for me. Yeah, and it's definitely, it definitely a tool to speed up uh, wealth generation and not actually create the wealth generation because uh, yep. it, it will take a lot of time to flip 500 bucks account to 100,000 to produce decent return per year so that you can live off of trading and focus your time on something else. Um, yeah, well, th- obviously, there's the investment option. If, if you can concentrate yeah, on percentages, you know, 10% of a 500 pound account is 10% of a million pound account. And uh, if you can just concentrate on those percentages, you'll have no problem attracting investors um, or, or, you know, being funded. Yeah, there is plen- plenty of money outside waiting for plenty of money. Yeah. 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 Okay, but I know that you're also big on self improvement. You're also soon to be best Amazon uh, author. So, <laughs> yep. can you tell us a little bit about that? I know that you're writing a book. When you're planning to release that, and what are your plans and goals with that? Sure. So, I started writing a book in March 2018. I finished the book in September 2018, and it was due Bravo. for launch. It was due for launch on December. Um, but over those few months, between September and December, I decided to tie it in with a course and some tools that I'm having developed as well, because I wanted to put links in the book so that they could, you know, you could go and download something or go and take a test or go to this site. And those sites and tools weren't ready. So I decided to hold off um, and it will be released this spring. So depending on when you're listening to this, it may already be out uh, <laughs> yeah. very, very, very soon. Uh, it's very, very final stages now. The book's done. The tools are being developed and, and the course is pretty much done. So uh, it's all going to be launched together. I just think it will be a bit more of a, a powerful tool for people. Um, I will be a bestseller on Amazon, absolutely, yep. with your help. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, by um, the way, guys, if you're looking this after spring 2019, there will be a link if you remember to update the description <laughs> below yeah. this video. So check it out and, uh, you know, buy a book, support Jason. And, guys, one more thing, Jason. You told us everything about you being the best author about the course. What is the book about and what is the course about? So everything I've just been over from um, when I wanted to replace my income, when I was frustrated, when I wanted to, um, you know, get out of, a, of an industry that I hated, uh, it, it, I, I learned a lot. It took me a lot longer than I needed it to, than it needed to. And um, the book is essentially sharing with you my strategy for how I did that, everything from um, the, the first half of the book is very much focused around my mindset because I grew up on a, on a council estate with literally no one around me that could lead me or guide me. Um, so th- the first half of the book is very much on mindset and my saving and investing strategies. And then the second half of the book is the wealth acceleration uh, where we go heavily into trading. And, um, and really the book's just, it's called, um, I won't give you the title yet, but it's about being free to make your own decisions, free to challenge the status quo, being financially free and really just free to do what you want, when you want, with uh, with who you want and sort of design your life to be who you want to be. Yeah, okay, that's, I actually cannot wait to get a book. I will be one of the first buyers of the book. That's Thank you very that's, much. That, yeah, thank you, man. I'm <laughs> looking forward to reading it. Uh, okay, that brings us like to roughly uh, like a general chat about you know trading your life, what are you doing right now, and all of the cool stuff. We also have some of the questions that uh, viewers and subscribers of mine asked me on social media. Okay. So uh, those are the questions that I ask almost everybody that come over. 
So, you, yeah, well, let's see what do you think. So what type of trader are you? I'm purely a technical-based trader. Um, I've got... Swing, day trading, what is the... I trade purely off technicals. I've got a, multiple accounts, one for a swing trading strategy only. Um, I've got an account where I trade um, some Forex pairs, which I trade in the live room. And that, and that's about it, really. So awesome. swing trading and day trading. How are, the, how, how are those two accounts before? Do you have, this is a question for me, uh, <laughs> like you, you have the same set, you have same amount of money in both of accounts and then, or they, uh, when you take a swing trade, can you take the opposite trade on a different account? Or obviously, yes, but you on the swing trading account, you're not taking the day trading trades, yes? That's right. Yeah. One of my accounts, the, the London Live Room account is actually linked to another account that's funded. Uh, so the Live Room account, we trade a £10,000 account in front of everyone. Yeah. Uh, the reason we keep it £10,000 and the kill trade is uh, $10,000 is because it's a realistic figure for people that are serious about trading. Chances are you can mm -hmm. find ten grand mm -hmm. uh, if you're serious. Um, so my Live Room account links to one of my other personal accounts. Uh, but the swing trading account is completely separate, and that is something I just check of an evening. Um, and they've got very, very different amounts of money in them. One is different amounts. Oh, okay. Yeah, different amounts of money. My my swing trading account is more sort of long term generational wealth creation, and my intraday slash day trading account is you know my my living uh, or sort of day to day pocket money, if you like. Uh huh. Pocket money. <laughs> Okay, uh, in range of hundreds of thousands or in range of dozens, hundreds? Uh, yeah, now my accounts are hundreds of thousands, yeah. Okay, can you tell us the uh, returns on a London Live Room account, on your personal day trading account, am I getting this correct? And then you have on your left side your Swing account. Yep, um, across both of them, it's around between 50 and 55% per year. Com uh, combined? Combined, yeah. Very good, very good. Okay, that's you guys. So you see what what a profit, what a professional trader with what, what six years of experience here, thirty six, four five years of experience and hard work can actually produce. Okay, what would be then in that case best for trading strategy for you? The best trading strategy for me is um, my my trend. Uh, following uh, trend continuation system. So it's basically a case of identifying a trend, looking at some moving averages, and uh, taking trades off of the moving averages. It's best because it pr uh, produces the best, best return? Um, it, for me, it's best for a number of the reasons. One, the, the little time I have to put in. Um, oh, the, the swing one, yeah? Yeah, 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 yeah. Ah, okay. You know, that's the big sort of steady... Uh, you know, 500 pit plus types of moves. Um, I'm not looking at um, the charts all the time, so it doesn't take up much of my time. Uh, but it does. Uh, the the drawback of it is it's it's a it's a lower strike rate. So you're talking like 30, maybe 35 uh, percent strike rate, but very big returns. So. Um, mm -hmm. I like that system just because of the time aspect. If I was talking about intraday, you know, uh, and, and day trading, I love the flag patterns on the on the dollar yen. Um, I I think if I wasn't educating, I would just whittle my portfolio down to just the dollar yen and just day trade the dollar yen because um, I, I, <laughs> I I just enjoy. You know it so well, yeah. I, I like it as a, I like it as a sport, you know. <laughs> Yeah. It's like when we go fishing, you go on the big lake with a big fish, you'll sit there for, for hours and hours trying to catch one big fish. But if you want a bit of sport and you get bored, you go over and you catch the little fish all day long. And it's, yeah. that's, that's kind of like how I see the dolly in. <laughs> okay. So uh, uh, in the course of like five years since you're being profitable, what was your biggest winner and biggest loser in pips, in money, in a percentage of returns? Yeah, biggest, uh, biggest, dr biggest uh, dr losing trade or biggest 
I'd say his biggest drawdown because it was over two or three trades uh, was seven and a half percent in in like a, a week, um, which was pretty crap. Uh, my biggest win in terms of money was just under thirty grand. It was twenty eight thousand something. Twenty eight thousand in one trade. Yeah. Swing trade. Swing. 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 Uh, yeah. Yeah. How many pips was that? Oh god, I can't remember. Percentage wise, you can't remember either. Uh, percentage at the time, um, ten percent, just under ten percent. Okay, what do you think? Uh, it's single. What, one more thing I have to ask: Isn't it? Was weren't you afraid putting a lot of money in brokers at first? A lot of money into brokers. Yeah, yeah. Holding a lot of money there doesn't that bring some kind of like? I know it's regulated and all of that stuff, but you know, having hundreds of thousand dollars in brokers, it's kind of not feeling not feeling you anxious or something yeah i mean i built up a relationship with a broker as i say i funded my account initially um with not the full amount i wanted to just dip my feet in slowly uh, and i uh -huh. built up a relationship with a guy I, i annoyed the guy at the brokerage for a long long time before i even committed to putting that money in And I wanted to know that I had a direct um, contact with him. I could ring him up. I had a direct line, um, you know, and, and by the end of that sort of two months, this was a, an ongoing process, two months, three months, four months where I was going, you know, I'm think, thinking about opening, you know, what's the best, you know, how are we going to, how's this going to work? What's the best account for me? And all that kind of stuff. Um I built up a relationship and by the time I funded the account, he set, I went above the, the, the level that they go down to a decent, a, a better commission. And, uh -huh, uh -huh. Uh, and you know, I, I just sort of funded the account and we went from there really. I, I wanted to make sure that I could withdraw my money whenever the hell I wanted to, you know, wanted to, and I wanted to click a button. It needed to be in my account within two days, all that kind of stuff. I made sure I sort of done all that due diligence way before and um and then took the plunge reputable broker big broker that everyone knows so awesome. haven't had any problems okay awesome so which brings us to two last questions and so what do you think it's single most important thing in trading the single most important thing in trading yeah um consistency hundred percent okay uh, and, and that goes down to learning looking at the charts what what pairs what system sticking with it you know just everything everything is based off of consistency yeah yeah well that's very put, it, good put it this way ivan if you can if you if you let's just say you know nothing about trading you've got no tools nothing you just open a chart and you just buy it and sell every single let's just say you buy at eight o'clock every uh, every morning and you sell back at half eight on the on the euro dollar right and every day you buy at 8 a.m you sell at 8 30 you buy at 8 a.m you sell at 8 30 over a year you will have consistent results you'll either consistently lose money consistently win money or you'll be consistently break even it'll be one of those three things so yeah yeah from that point <laughs> Right, then you yeah. can tweak it to either make it profitable or you yeah, know. Yeah, yeah. So <laughs> yes. even if you didn't know anything about trading and you were just consistent, you would still become good at trading eventually because you would just it just be tweaking what you're doing. Okay, and that's by the way, guys, a good strategy. So maybe you can go ahead and just test it out. Maybe it will work. You know, add some filters, check out the RSI, ATR, and all of that cool stuff. Okay. Successful, okay. successful traders understand what you just said. They understand that it's it's a system that you build. It, it's how it's how to develop a system. That's when traders succeed. It's not taking something off the shelf and going just blind. It's actually knowing what's behind the development of a system and, and optimizing of a system and, and being consistent enough to go and trade it live. Yep, yep, absolutely. Uh, and it has to be rule-based system. That's another big thing that I, I learned with you with tier one trading is 
which kind of gave me a peace of mind because I was always like when I was watching the price action going through the RSI, stochastics, RSI cross versus stochastics, touching Bollinger Bands, touching the second one. I got to buy now. I got to buy. Oh, no, I, should, I shouldn't have buy right. But at that point, I should have wait. Why? Well, didn't you see this? No, I didn't see it. You know, what's the rule? And then we, when you guys said me, said to me, hey, man, you got to have rules. Like, what are rules? Like, if this is like this, specify, be specific. And then I kind of, okay, and that's it. Yeah, just have rules. It's the just same. It's the consistency, rules. isn't it? Yeah. The rules are there for consistency. Exactly. Just follow the plan. Follow your rules. Which b- brings us to the final words for listeners and watchers. What would that be from you, Jason? Then I'll wrap it up. Final words for tr- anyone listening to this. You're probably learning to trade. Um, my best advice would be um, try to backward engineer the future. Um, just look at the outcome and be very, very processed focused. You can't forward engineer the past because it's already broken. So you need to backward engineer the future. You need to plan where you want to get to and then you get there. So just an example here, if you was to, if you was to say, right, we want to make this car, we want to make a car that's going to drive 500 miles at 200 miles an hour consistently nonstop. So you take this old BMW and you go, well, this is a sporty car. So let's change the brakes. Let's change the tires. Let's change the engine. Let's sort of make it, let's crush it a bit to make it aerodynamic. So it doesn't use as much fuel. What you're doing is you're trying to forward engineer something that's already broken the car isn't designed to go 500 miles at 200 miles an hour what you would do (laughs) is you would say right what do we want to do we want to go 500 miles for 200 miles an hour what is the best engine we need what is the best axle we need what is the best wheels we need tires we need car you know materials and you would build the thing so it's designed to go 500 miles at 200 miles an hour does that make sense yep and that's because you're outcome focused not you know you, you you're you've got the outcome but you're process focused developing the outcome and it's it it's the same in trading you know you're too many people are trying to tweak something that's broken or you know they're focused on the outcome rather than the process and it really really discourages a lot of traders so just know that it's possible know what you can know what the limit the potentials are and and just focus on making progress every day i I cannot agree more it's easy even easy uh, small improvements each and every day the only thing i do every day is like breakfast 15 to 20 trades on one pair until i'm done with one market my goal is to finish one market in two weeks and then move ahead. That's it. One and a half up to two hours each and every day before my work. And eventually, by the end of this year, I will have a bunch of pairs back to a bunch of strategies ready for kicking in next year. Which yep. brings us, guys, if you by the end to the end of this video, if you didn't so far, click that like button. Also, make sure to subscribe to your I think your right 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 part of the screen down below and click that bell button. Share the video if you like the content and let's help as many people possible because I, I think that a lot of people need to see this because it can change the direction of their trading. And so it, it also can change the direction for your trading as well. With that Excellent. being said, thank you for sticking until the end of this video and guys, catch you up in the next one. Thank you.